Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another Second Breakfast podcast. I'm Andy Roth, alongside Phil DeBall. Say hi, Phil. Hi, Andy. I'm I'm calling from the middle of the ocean. <laughs> How do you like my new background? I, I love it. It's I love only it. going to last for today. This is the last day, and then we're going back to normal. But that's that's okay. That's okay. Uh, so so it's Tuesday, and uh, yeah. well, on on the subject of on the subject of backgrounds. How do you like my festive background? It's so depressing. Nothing. It's nothing so depressing. Festive, like beige. Huh? I want to point out that your background is so depressing and blah that even the people that are only listening can tell. <laughs> like Andy sounds boring. <laughs> I just spit on my computer. Okay. <laughs> For the rest is... of this podcast, I will do it as Eeyore. <laughs> uh, um, that's what beige does. That's what beige does to you. So uh, we're going to do something today that, that we have been doing the past few Tuesdays, and we, we kind of like it. And uh, and so we'll see how this one goes. And <laughs> We kind of like it. it I is, like it. The, the indefensible position. Better than a kick to the groin. It is. Oh, well, certainly. My, yeah. As my grandma used to say, it's better than a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. Also true. Both yeah, of those thanks, things Prince. are true. Okay, so the indefensible position is when we take up a position that is ridiculous and basically indefensible and then just defend it. <laughs> but we've added a new, we've added a new uh, spin on it. Last week we added a new spin when we talked about Quentin Tarantino, or two weeks ago, which is that um, we take turns. Yeah. So first Andy's going to defend this terribly indefensible position and I'm going to attack it and then we'll switch. Yeah, okay. My indefensible position. Phil. Yeah. You know what's awesome? Tell me, Andy. Hate watching something. That position is indefensible. Not only that, I think we might need to define it. <laughs> I, 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 I was deciding whether I wanted to use our catchphrase first or just say, <laughs> what does that mean? Fair enough. So, hate watching, I mean, this is not from, you know, you know, Merriam Webster Dictionary, but I feel like uh, I feel probably like the Urban Dictionary. I bet you it's in the Urban Dictionary. I bet it is, but it's also probably some weird, gross, off color thing too, so we're not gonna look it up. Um <laughs> You're totally <laughs> looking it up right up. now, aren't you? Nice. You can tell because the computer's shaking like a tree. <laughs> like a leaf on a tree. So hate watching hate watching is the act of watching something. Uh, I think traditionally it's like because you hate it and and so like because you want the experience of getting angry at it, right? Or making fun of it or something like that. I will expand it ever so slightly to uh, to like watching something out of and this is more for television shows, but like watching something out of. A habit is the wrong word, but like watching something you know you're not going to enjoy, but out of like obligation and like this is going to be terrible. I think that is terrible. a separate. I think that is a separate issue, but worth discussing. Sure, fair enough. I'm looking. I'm looking at you, The Office. <laughs> I'm also looking at you. How I met your. How mother. I met your mother. I just gave up. I just gave up three seasons ago. Now I'm three seasons removed from How I Met Your Mother. I will say this. I will say this. I have I have started in the and and I'll segue into my argument here. I have st I started in my expanded definition that we're not going to use. I have segued into full on hate watching that show. I'm like I cannot wait to get <laughs> there. Andy, like, I think I think hate watching is an indefensible thing to do. I I don't know. There's only so many hours in the day. There's so many things we could be watching. What are you doing, spending your time hate watching something? Give me what could possibly good, what good could that do for your soul, my friend? Um, now hang on. Okay. <laughs> That's not the position. Oh. <laughs> the position is not my soul is in a better place at the end of it. <laughs> the, the position is hate watching is awesome. And let me, let me. Well, my argument against it is it's bad for your soul. But continue. Well, go ahead. Well, I had to go. I, had to I, go there. I know you had to go there. I'm a guardian you. of your soul. So, I care about it. Fair enough. So here's here's. Well, first off, let, take a trip in the wayback machine with me, Phil. Will you? We're going <clears> way <throat> back. Going way. Is that is that the sound the wayback machine makes? I don't know. Whatever. Nice. I've never um, been in one before. 
we grew up, we were in the prime, we were the prime age for this show that sort of, it didn't spawn hate watching, but it, it sort of brought it to the people. And that is Mystery Science Theater 3000. Ah, well right? played, sir. Well played. Thank you. Um, oh, it's a good for argument. For those who have not seen it, uh, the I won't get into the conceit of the show, but basically you watch terrible movies and overlaid along the bottom of the screen is the front row of a, of a movie theater where you see, or the silhouette of a front row of a movie theater, and you, and you see the silhouettes of characters in the outer show, the Mystery Science Theater 3000, uh, and they watch old, terrible movies, and they make fun of it. And they talk over dialogue, and they, like, it's their silhouettes, but, like, they, they'll stand up and do, like, physical yeah, comedy. Yeah, yeah. But everybody knows. If you don't know what Mystery Science Theater 3000 is, don't watch our show. Like, seriously, turn this off, go find out what it is. You're right. Like, get right. your life together. And that is, and that is... That's hate-watching. I mean, it's hate-watching. To, it's hate-watching. There isn't a lot of... Hate, now, now, I want to say this. Hate-watching implies, just because hate is such an ugly word, it implies anger. There's... There's... What is that? One more time? There it is. Hulk smash! It is... Hulk smash! It is... I didn't get the sense that the people who did uh, MST3K, as those in the know called it, uh, I didn't get the sense that MST3K, like, there was a lot of anger involved. Um, there was some for comedic effect in the show, but but uh, but they were but it was but it was hate watching. It was hate watching, and um, it's true. Well, that we was the whole, college, the whole premise of the show is that they were meant to watch things that they that they were not going to like. Yes, right. So um, yes, in college. In college, uh, Phil and I were in college when the the magnum opus Battlefield Earth came out, Ugh. which, for those who don't know, is a science fiction uh, movie, which you could probably tell. It's a science fiction movie. It's based on a book by L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology. It was such a horror show. Like, like the, and this was also right when, like, there started to be websites that I would go to to learn more about movies that were coming out, things like that. It was, from the get-go, marked as just the worst kind of vanity project for John Travolta right. and Kelly Preston, right. who, were, who were Scientologists. Uh, just, what? Just, You're the first person to tell me that. Sorry, go Right, ahead. right. So, I'm trying to inform a section, a segment of our audience, Philip. Okay. Eh, why I yada. Um I hate watch you. Um <laughs> that got I, real. I did that, that get did that did that get real for a second? Okay. The screen, um, I felt... Here's how excited I was because I had like I came to college like on the strength of Mystery Science Theater three thousand and on the Christopher Guest movie Waiting for Guffman, which is not the same thing. But no. I but I didn't understand the difference. I was like, I watched Waiting for Guffman and I was laughing at these characters, right? Right. And I didn't understand what Guess was trying to do as I as as fully as I do now. And so I sort of lumped it together. And I got so excited for Battlefield Earth. Not only did I go opening weekend, if not opening night, I read the book beforehand. Right? Ready for this? You're supposed to be defending the idea of hate watching. It doesn't sound like any of this worked out for you. I, but it, okay. So first off, now I have the now, now, but now I could say I read the damn book. Right? And let me tell you this: it is like a, two, it is 250 pages of like a tightly paced, like exciting science fiction story. Unfortunately, the book is about 900 pages long. <laughs> it is it is horrifyingly bad. And the and the movie horrifyingly bad. But I could tell you the people I went with I went with Katie and I went with Brett and we had a fantastic time. We may have gone with some other people but they were sitting on either side of me. And we had a fantastic time. We we didn't disturb other people in the theater. Not that there were all that many people to disturb, but uh, but we had a great time laughing at the movie. Fair enough. My last piece of evidence to tell you that hate watching is is awesome is a much newer movie that 
before I saw Battle, the, the, when people ask me, why are you going to see Battlefield Earth? I, I said, because I haven't seen the worst movie I will ever see yet. And now I have the opportunity to. And I okay. was right. Okay. Until this movie. Okay. Until The Room. Ugh. This is a movie. We've talked about this before. It's like I almost don't even have the energy to hear you talk about it. That's I how. Know. This movie gave a friend of mine, Tom, I know you're watching. He will back me up on this. It gave him chest pains. It gave him <laughs> chest pains. In 40 so minutes, what? it gave him chest Also, when we watched it for the first time, we only made it through about 40 minutes. And it was supposed to be a larger party, and then everybody but Tom backed out. So he made guacamole. That's like one of the things, like I make the brownies, you know, he makes guacamole. He made guacamole for eight people. The two of us finished it in 40 minutes because it was like, we have to do something. We have to do something, right? Yeah. I then... Thank God it wasn't like an eight ball. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Then we started on the crystal meth. Right. Um, then... I had another party, and I confirmed people. I was like, look, this is a terrible movie, but it's going to be fun. We're going to laugh at it. It's going to be great. Like, eight or nine people came. We just hung out in my apartment. We ate popcorn, and, and I think he, Tom may have made guacamole again. It was just a lot of fun. And we spent, I mean, howling, convulsive, cathartic laughter right. at how terrible this artistic endeavor was. Hate watching. I no, because don't, I don't buy it. Because I think I think I think that's still time you could have spent doing something that was positive in any way. Like 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 the like you could you the idea. I had never seen a thing that was the worst thing ever. It's like awesome. It's great <laughs> that you've never seen it. I instead I saw something I really liked. There's so many things out there that you would like that you haven't had a chance to see yet. That's right. That's my best argument against it. That's that's all I I feel like I want to just. My best argument against hate watching is just to recycle the conversation you just had. Be like, <laughs> everything you just said is why I think it's a terrible idea. Sure. Ugh. Can I can I attack hate watching? Wait. So can we switch? Yeah. Okay. Hate watching is great. Um. <laughs> and he, and here's why. All right. Let me tell you. Please let me tell, tell me. you why. I think of hate watching is uh, in, uh, on a couple different because it's cathartic, and because um, I think it's possible. I'm not sure that I actually believe this, but this is my argument. I think it's possible that we have this hate inside of us, and while you don't want to feed a hate that's violent, that there are feelings inside of us that it's like we need to get rid of them. You and I talked, I think we, we had a conversation with a friend of yours uh, a while back, uh, Kenny, about, um, or Kenneth, Ken, Kenny, about, uh, about uh, uh, revenge movies. Ken. Ken, Kenny, Kenneth, Ken, 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 Ken Bo. Penorama, oh. Hendrick. We had a conversation with Ken about uh, about uh, revenge movies, and we talked a little bit about the Psalms and about this sort of. There's a catharsis in like acknowledging your hate and sort of like living into the hate and even dreaming it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so being able to focus that in a, on something that is completely like to focus the hate on something that is completely like and utterly harmless is maybe not a bad thing. My example would be professional wrestling, my friend. Awesome. Rowdy Roddy Piper. Just when you think you have the answers, I change the questions. His whole thing was to just make people not like him. WWE <laughs> is based on the idea that there will always be good guys and bad guys. What they call faces are good guys and heels are bad guys. And the whole point of being a heel is just to elicit a reaction. The better the heel you are, the best heel ever in the history of it was Andy Kaufman when he became a professional wrestler. Yep. Because his whole gig was to make people <clears throat> just straight, plain hate him. Yep. And he loved it because it was pure, utter emotion. And he recognized that that was a real thing. Another guy who gets this is Norm MacDonald, who says, I would rather bomb terribly and have people scream hate than just not care about a joke. And he took the bombing, and you watch him as a Weekend Update guy, when he would tell a joke that was bad or that people didn't like, they would boo him. Watch his reaction, because he would never defend himself. He would just sit there and smile. And it was it was borderline creepy, but fantastic. And when you read the interviews with him, he was like, literally, it was like, why did you smile? He was like, because I thought it was great. Awesome. Like, can, I, can, I add, can I add someone to your list real quick? 
Yeah. Uh, Howard Stern. Howard yeah. Stern. I don't. I barely remember the movie Private Parts because I don't remember being very good. Oh, it's such a good movie, actually. You should I, watch I, it. I just. I. I'm. I need to see it again. You yes. know what I mean? Like I don't it's, think I was it's worth watching. watching. I think it's worth watching. Go ahead, though. I believe you. I believe you. But there's a line. I'm not going to get it right. But there's a line that's basically like. The people that love him listen to him for this amount of time. The people that hate him listen yeah. to him for even yeah. longer. No, that's exactly right. The people who love him, their average listening time, their average listening time for any radio show when he in the bit was like something like five minutes. Mm -hmm. The average listener of a Howard Stern show is thirty minutes. The average listener who was complaining was for an hour. Right. Right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think there's a place in us that's built in where we we it gives us an opportunity. It gives us an opportunity to like let out some of the bile. To yep. release it, yep. and 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 pro wrestling gets it. Pro wrestling gets that we need it. You need a villain and a hero, and you play the old tropes, and you just go along with it. And the best villains are the ones that just it just make you just like ah. Oh. And I mean, I mean, th those guys are awesome. You know, CM There's a Punk. That the people from the Star Wars movies that we remember the most are not the purest good guys. That's true, right? That's true. Even Yoda's a little creepy. You know what I mean? But I don't like, think that's a hate thing to me. That's just acknowledging the fact that we're not perfect. Fair. Fair. But villains are as memorable or more so than the heroes. You love to hate them. You love to hate them. That's right. That's I right. Think, I, think, I think I'm done here. Okay. That's fair. Um, I've said my <clears throat> I, uh, I don't – I don't – but all, all bets off, I don't buy it. I don't buy into hate watching. May, but, I, but may, I, I, may I tell you why hate watching is terrible? Please. I think it's cynical in the worst way. I think yeah. I think it is. I think it, I, I, and and I think cyni I think cynicism um, is and, and sarcasm is like the lowest. I just think it, unless it's done perfectly, at which point it's not cynicism and sarcasm anymore. It's I just think right. Yeah, I'm with you, and I, and I am sarcastic and cynical a lot, but it's something I don't like about myself. <laughs> Sure. Like it's it's a thing of me when I do it that I'm like ugh. Like, like people, I wish people, I had the easy people way look out. At, at comedians like George right. Carlin and Louis C.K. and they say they're cynical. And like that's not actually what's no, going on there. Not at all. That's not no. actually what's happening. No. Um, they're tapping into the id and then coming out the other end of it. Like so it's a well whole said. other thing. So well said. Um, the the to to get to get a little frou frou for a moment. It is. It is quite a thing to produce a work of art. Yep. And to do something that is the entire point is to mock, is not even to critique, but actually to mock. Right. That is, that's not a cool thing to do. Well, there's um, like, there were like probably three or four hundred people, maybe more, who worked on Battlefield Earth, for instance. Yes. And many yes. of them were probably good people. And it's just like, hey, let me take a crap on the work they did. Yes. Um, my final point, though, is that... It's not actually – what you're doing is not actually hate-watching, right? Because right. Because you're still getting enjoyment out of it, right? Right. And I'm really glad that you use the – I'm going to use your example of wrestling, right? Like – like The point is to – they create something. The artist says, I will elicit a reaction out of you that is hateful on yes. purpose. Yes. That makes sense to me. Yes. That's something I can buy into. Yes. Um, Mystery Science Theater does kind of ruin that process, but we can talk about that more later. We can talk about Mystery Science Theater at some point soon. Yeah. All right. This was fun. I had I had a good time with this. I, even yep. though even I mean, it, maybe it marks me as not a very good person, but I'm not willing to give up the room. I don't think we're worried about that. I, I think I'll, I just we just need to mark you as someone who needs a different colored wall. That's the only thing we need to do. Call me. Andy, you don't even – no, you don't even need to buy paint. Literally buy a stack of construction paper and just friggin' scotch tape. That's it. <laughs> like for the love of Pete, man. <laughs> I'm going to shave my head and try to blend into the wall. It would look – it's terrifying. All right. <laughs> Let's get out of here. I got to finish. We're, we're done. Guys, uh, I hope – Tomorrow, uh, Project Melway. Yes, tomorrow, Air Project America. Melway. Air America, very excited about that. Um, yes. So look out for that tomorrow. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed the indefensible position. This has been a lot of fun, uh, or at least I thought so. Uh, I I hope Phil did as well. I hope you don't hate watch it. Yes, please don't hate watch us. We are <laughs> <very> sensitive. <laughs> um, this has been another Second Breakfast podcast. I'm Andy Roth. That's Phil DeBall. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.